No, that's okay. I know you were expecting it, but I need to interrupt as uh, it's 10.15 and we need to move to member statement. And I recognize the member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, uh, thank you. It's my privilege to rise today and inform the House that this past Sunday, in front of a capacity crowd of thousands of raucous fans in Sarnia, <clears throat> the Lambton College women's basketball program won their first ever Ontario College's Athletic Association Championship with a convincing 78-56 win over the previously undefeated and number two ranked team in Canada, the Algonquin College Wolves. With the historic victory in the provincial championship game, the mighty Lambton Lions secured the school's first ever invitation to the Canadian Collegiate Athletic Association Championship Tournament being held next week at Lakeland College in Lloydminster, Alberta. Led by coaching prodigy Janine Day and Conference Player of the Year and, and First Team All-Canadian Brianna Preddy, the 2023-24 Lambton Lions utilized a smothering full-court defense and relentless fast-paced offense to dominate on the hardwood this season, compiling a 19-2 record so far. The average margin of victory for the Lions this season is nearly 29 points per game. As the Lambton Lions prepare to make the trip west for the National Championship Tournament, I want to say to all the coaches and the players at Lambton College, on behalf of the Ontario government and all the members of the legislature, congratulations and good luck, and we will be cheering for you. Go Lions! Next member statement, the member for Timiskaming Cochrane. Thank you. Uh, on Sunday, I attended a celebration of life for Mr. Craig Connell. Craig made an incredible difference in my life, and judging by how uh, full that room was, uh, on many others. I first met Craig as a fellow board member on the board of Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Uh, I can honestly say I have never disagreed with anyone as often and as vehemently as Craig Connell. And I have never enjoyed someone's company so much. Here, here. Craig was the first person I told that I was going to run for MPP, and he, he was stand, we were standing at a bar at an event, and uh, I said, I was going, if he asked me if I was going to run for the board, I said, no, I'm going to run for MPP. He said, oh, you'd be great. And I was, as I was walking away, I heard him mumble, my God, he might run for the NDP. <laughs> <laughs> He came over to my table and he stopped and he said, I have an announcement to make. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, John here is going to run for MPP and if he was in my riding, I'd even vote for him. <laughs> even if he's running for the communists. <laughs> he, made, he leaves behind uh, Maura and his uh, son Allison, uh, or daughter Allison, son Lloyd and their families and an incredible business legacy, Wicked to Learn Farms, and he leaves behind an incredible legacy to all of us for all the things that he fought for. He emigrated from Scotland, brought his skills to this country, and made all our lives better, whether we know it or not, on all, on all our behalf. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Bradford Brent. Good morning, Speaker. Last week, I was pleased to welcome the Associate Minister of Housing to the City of Brantford to announce a $3 million housing investment from our government as part of the Building Faster Fund. And there he goes. This funding was awarded to Brantford because they were able to exceed their housing target by 8% last year. Brantford broke ground on a total of 788 new housing units, unlocking an additional $400,000. Brantford should be proud of the work that they have done to get shovels in the ground faster. I am honoured to represent a city that is dedicated to ensuring that residents have a place to call home, and I am appreciative that our government provides the necessary tools to help the city of Brantford achieve their goals. Brantford continues to grow at an unprecedented rate, and I am grateful to all those in the Brantford Brant community, including Mayor Kevin Davis, for working with our government to meet the development and investment needs of our community. I am thankful every single day for the incredible working relationship that I have with the City of Brantford. With the support of these pro provincial funds, 
our community will sustain its expansion while creating new job opportunities and business growth. Brantford will continue to be the best place to live, work, play, and raise a family in Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. That's, that's the good. Yes. Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, it was beautiful weather yesterday. For May, not March. Toronto's winter was the warmest on record. It is an extreme weather event, just like the Texas Smokehouse fires, just like the fires across Canada that darkened our eastern seaboard for weeks last year, just like the warmest ocean temperatures that have ever been recorded. They were recorded this January. These are terrifying signs about the health of our planet. Now, the Conservatives have set a completely irresponsible target of reducing emissions by 30% by 2030. This government is ideologically opposed to wind and solar and energy efficiency. They're spending billions of dollars on a highway that we don't need, and they're doubling down on paving over farmland to build homes that people simply cannot afford. This is not the kind of leadership that an advanced industrial state like Ontario should be demonstrating. It is an example of failure. Ontario needs to reduce its emissions by 50% by 2030. It needs to put in place the investments, policies and programs to deliver on that goal, from retrofitting homes and buildings to investing in energy efficiency and to investing in public transit. We have the know-how, the technology and the workforce to act on climate. What we need from this government is the political will to ready us for the future, it is time to rise to the challenge and act in a manner that meets the crisis we face. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. February 22nd was Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day, and at Turtle Creek Manor in Mississauga Lakeshore, I hosted a free stethoscope check event for local seniors with Ellen Ross and her team from Heart Valve Voice Canada. And I want to thank cardiologist Dr. Gurup Parmar and nurse practitioner Shirley Lowe from the Heart Team at Trillium Health Partners for all their help with this event and for everything they do to care for patients living with heart valve disease. And again, I want to thank all members for supporting my private member's bill, Bill 66, the Heart Valve Disease Awareness Act, which is now a committee on social policy. In 2021, I was proud to co-sponsor another bill to raise awareness for sickle cell disease with the Minister of the Environment. Lanry and the Sickle Cell Awareness Group of Ontario were the driving force behind Bill 255, and they're back at Queen's Park today. And I'm proud to sponsor their reception and invite all members to join us tonight at 5 p.m. in room 228 and 230 to learn more about sickle cell disease. And lastly, Speaker, the Kidney Patient and Donor Alliance of Canada will be here tomorrow, and I'm proud to sponsor their reception as well. And I invite all members to join us for lunch tomorrow in room 228 after question period to learn more about kidney care from patients and donors from across the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Sudbury. À Sudbury, on a plusieurs organisations en français. Et cette fin de semaine passée, this last week, I had the pleasure to uh, join a group uh, to celebrate the 50th uh, uh, of uh, the Francophone students. Uh, uh, the is an organisation uh, that offers several services. Uh, incredible services uh, and uh, the students were here at uh, the first association of association of franco ontarians uh, 50 years of existence uh, during the celebrations i presented uh, the request uh, for their 50th anniversary since its uh, inception the association has played a role at the Laurentian University. They offer a number of services uh, to support uh, the uh, uh, students of the French language. She sh they should be proud of the realization that they do. I would like to uh, wish them for the future years 
to all the members, to all the students uh, that uh, were involved with the AOF uh, uh, for this step, and congratulations for that French association. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Thunder Bay Atacoka. At Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize a good friend and colleague, O'Connor Township Councillor Bishop Garfield Rasico, who sadly passed away on December 30th. Bishop's journey began in Sudbury, but through the twists and turns of life, he made his home in the Township of O'Connor in 1993. Shortly after moving to O'Connor, Bishop embarked on a new chapter in his life, dedicating himself to the betterment of his community by running as councillor, a role he fulfilled with unwavering commitment and integrity for the next 24 years. Bishop's passion for the township of O'Connor was evident in everything he did, and he worked tirelessly, tirelessly to advocate for the welfare and prosperity of its residents, fueled by a deep-seated belief in the potential of his community. Bishop was a friend to many, a beacon of kindness, compassion, and generosity. His love of people drove him to open his food vending operation, where he served up his own brand of hometown advice and conversations, along with hamburgers, hot dogs, and poutines. His warm smile and genuine concern for others endeared him to all who had the privilege of knowing him. Whether offering a helping hand <clears throat> or a listening ear, Bishop was always there, ready to uplift and support those in need, even during very difficult times in his own life. I extend deepest sympathy to Bishop's wife, Linda, son, Mitchell, and grandson, Bishop, and the rest of the family. Bishop's legacy of service and compassion will endure for generations to come, and we shall honour his memory by continuing the work he began. Rest well, my friend. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Guelph. I want to thank the 600 Guelphites who walk in the coldest night of the year on February 24th to raise funds for Hope House. Together, we raised $193,592. I was proud to walk on Team Orpha, led by Orpha, Thra Orpha Thrasher, who is 102 years young. Orpha is the mom of my constituent staff member, Shelley, and the wife of the late Ivan Thrasher, MPP for Windsor Sandwich from 1964 to 67. Hope House alleviates poverty by building community. Hope House feeds 2,400 people, supplies fully stocked backpacks to 2,300 school children, and provides services to meet the basic needs of over 1,500 people. Organizations like Hope House are trying to help people find a safe, affordable place to live. And I'm proud to say that my community in Guelph has mobilized to build a 32-unit permanent supportive housing project. And I want to thank the government for contributing $3 million in capital funding for the project. Now, now I urge the government to fund the health care supports needed to open that permanent supportive housing project so we can ensure that we can move people from the streets and tents into a home. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Nepia. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today to commemorate International Women's Day. Uh, this year's theme is invest in women and accelerate progress, and there's many women here who've done that, and I wanted to acknowledge a few in my life who've been able to do that, like Louise Mercier, who has been a leader with the Navy League of Canada, who works with the Conference of Defence Associations, and has been on the executive of the foundation of the Rideau Pearly Long-Term Care Facility, or Barbara Farber, who's a leader in our Jewish community, is involved in commercial real estate, and is uh, not only a philanthropist, but the honorary lieutenant colonel of the Cameron Highlanders. 
Sonia Shuri, members of Ottawa would all know, has been leading Invest Ottawa as their interim CEO. And just like any strong woman, she can hustle better in high heels and stilettos than any man ever could. I'd like to congratulate Lynn yes. Hamilton for her work as equal voice in prompting the voices of women. And of course, my own mother and my late Aunt Ina, who, despite the fact it was my father who was elected six times, it was my mother leading my Aunt Ina's campaign for election to school board that really got me involved in politics. And of course, Speaker, I'd like to say thank you to all women in this chamber for showing their strength of leadership and character, as well as the women who support us both inside this chamber and out as staff of either yours or ours. Finally, I would just like to uh, wish one of our colleagues in particular well this International Women's Day, Caroline Mulrooney, our Treasury Board President. She was a uh, former um, seatmate of mine, a friend and a valued colleague. And I know this week has been very difficult for her with the passing of her father, the Right Honourable Brian Mulrooney. But before he was the Prime Minister of Canada, he was Caroline Mulrooney's father. And he dedicated his life to his family, her and her three brothers. And I know through her grace, her kindness, her intelligence are all characteristics and traits that he passed on to her as well as her mother, Mila Mulrooney. And uh, I want to say on this International Women's Day that uh, we will continue to invest in women across this province and we will continue to accelerate their progress. And to all women in this chamber, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Brampton North. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday was a wonderful, wonderful day in Brampton North. I spent the afternoon down at Lofers Lake, and if you haven't had a chance to walk around Lofers Lake on a sunny day, Mr. Speaker, you really ought to try it. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of showing off Lofers Lake to Ontario's terrific Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. We were joined by Brampton's Mayor and City Council, as well as a ton of local community groups, namely the People Against Littering, the Brampton Environmental Alliance, Heart Lake Happenings, the Guru Nanak Mission Centre, and of course the legendary Heart Lake Turtle Troopers. We were happy to see the Minister, and even happier when she brought a big check with her. I'm pleased to report to the House that the Ontario Government is investing in Loafers Lake and the surrounding wetlands through the Wetland Preservation Grant to a total of two and a half million dollars. This, this money will be used for a few purposes, uh, restoring Lofers Lake shoreline, combating invasive species, enhancing the natural flood mitigation around Etobicoke Creek, planting 6,500 trees up near Conservation Drive and more. Uh, all of this work will happen by the end of 2024. Uh, speaker, restoring the Loafers Lake shoreline is a task I've been seized with for literally a year and a half. Uh, I'm thrilled we're getting it done this early in my term. Yesterday was a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.